The Canadian real estate market has now hit a turning point. We know that in the long run, house prices always trend up. But what about the short term? We're currently seeing house prices flatten and even start to decline. Hey everyone, welcome back to Bald Prairie Real Estate and the most comprehensive monthly Canadian housing market update. My name is Matthew Pfeiffer and I'm not just going to read you some of the scary headlines because, well, the headlines that are out there right now are really scary. The Canadian housing market is on the verge of collapse if you read just the headlines. Instead, what I want to do is go through the year's worth of data that I have collected for you go and give you some context to all those scary headlines and then give you local agent insights so that you know exactly what's going on in your housing market. And we're gonna separate the headlines from the truth. But before we get into this housing market update, let's start off with another terrible joke. What did the yoga teachers say when they were asked to leave and they really didn't want to? Nah, I'ma stay. Thank you to the viewer that submitted that joke. If you have a great joke that I can use in a future episode, put it in the comments below. Give this video a like if you love learning about real estate and subscribe if you haven't already. In Victoria, they had 852 homes sold in the month, and that's up 10% over the five-year average of 752 homes sold. Just shy of 1,400 homes were put up for sale last month. That is up 14% from the five-year average of about 1,200 homes put up for sale in the month. They're finally starting to see more inventory in Victoria, but it's still well below their five-year average with just under 1,400 homes for sale. That means they're down 32% from the five-year average. Normally, there's about 2,000 homes for sale this time of year. And that months of inventory continues to increase. It's now 1.7, but it's still very squarely in a very strong seller's market. The composite benchmark price has now officially crossed $1 million, just a hair over that in Victoria, and that is up 26% from last year. The local insight for Victoria is that we are seeing both sales and new listings back to more normal levels, but the active inventory still remains well below the averages. The BC government did pass legislation to enact a cooling off period, but as of this point, there's absolutely no details as to how long this cooling off period is, what happened if a buyer backs out. Now, I'm going to do a video on this when there's actually details and how it's gonna impact you as a buyer. But for now, let's talk about what's going on in Vancouver. The 3,200 homes sold last month in Vancouver is way down from last month, but it is up 16% from the five-year average of about 2,800 homes sold in a month. And there were just over 6,100 homes put up for sale in the month. That is up 14% from the five-year average. Normally about 5,300 homes would be put up for sale in a month. There is still under 9,000 active listings for sale in Vancouver right now, and that is down 19% from the five-year average. Normally, they'd be closing in on 11,000 homes for sale right now. But we continue to see more and more inventory in Vancouver each and every single month. Their months of inventory is now up to 1.4. Again, still very squarely in the seller's market, but improving each and every single month. And the composite benchmark price, that is $1.374 million, and that's up 19% from last year. When I was talking with local agents in Vancouver, the word I heard was hesitancy from buyers. They're just so unsure of what is gonna happen in this market. Are we gonna see more inventory? Are we gonna see prices decline? Are rates gonna continue to go up? Everybody's just very unsure of what is going on right now. So we are seeing this slowdown activity. The question now is, is this just a blip in the radar or is this the beginning of a long-term more significant trend in the Vancouver real estate market 3,400 that is the number of homes sold in Calgary last month and that's up 99% over the five-year average of 1,700 homes sold in a month there was about 4,600 homes put up for sale in the month and that is also up 42% over the five-year average normally there's about 3,200 homes put up for sale in the month there's about 4,800 homes currently for sale in Calgary, and that is down 30% from the five-year average, where normally there's 7,000 homes for sale this time of year. Months of inventory is now at 1.1, and the composite benchmark price in Calgary is a staggering $526,000. That is up 17% from last year. When I was talking with real estate agents from Calgary, they kept talking about all the money from foreign buyers entering their market. And those foreign buyers, they're coming from Vancouver and Toronto. They're looking for investment, rental properties. So anything that is showing 
positive cash flow or anything that is more affordable, those are getting snapped up like crazy by all these Toronto and Vancouver buyers right now. In Edmonton, just over 2,900 houses were sold. That is up 71% over their five year average of about 1,700 homes sold in a month. And with 4,700 homes put up for sale in the month, that is up 42% over the five year average of about 3,300 homes put up for sale in the month. And currently there are 6,468 homes for sale in Edmonton. That's down 25% from the five year average where normally you're gonna have about 8,600 homes for sale at this time of year. Months of inventory is now 2.2 in Edmonton. Again, still very much a seller's market. The composite benchmark price in Edmonton is closing in on $370,000. It's actually kind of crazy. The price difference between Calgary and Edmonton right now is quite significant. And that price is up 8% from last year. In Regina, there are 380 homes sold the month. That is up 46% over the five year average, which is 260 homes sold in the month. There were 625 homes newly listed for sale. That's up 20% over the five year average of 520 homes put up for sale. And finally, we saw the inventory levels increase in Regina. We're now at 950 homes for sale. That is down 30% from the five year average. Normally there's about 1,360 homes for sale at this time of year. Months of inventory is now 2.5, still citywide a seller's market, but there's very much pockets of very hot activity, very strong seller's market, while others are more balanced or even buyer's market still. The composite benchmark price has climbed to $271,000. That's approaching the prices we were seeing in 2017. It's up 4% from last year. The local insight for Regina is that with more inventory, buyers have more choices, so we're not seeing as many of those crazy multiple offer situations. But that being said, good properties that show well, that are priced well, are still seeing multiple offers and they're selling above asking price. This is most common in that 350 to about $550,000 price point. Whereas townhouses and condos, that market is a little bit softer, more balanced. Saskatoon saw 461 homes sold in a month. That is up 29% over the five year average where normally it's 360 homes sold in a month. There were 665 homes put up for sale. That is down 12% from the five year average of 755 homes. And to start the month at 1,030 homes currently for sale, that is down 42% from the five year average of just under 1,800 homes for sale. Months of inventory is 2.2 in Saskatoon, still very much a seller's market, but it is like Regina, very segmented. The benchmark price in Saskatoon is now $380,000 and that is up 6% from last year. And buyers agents in Saskatoon are reporting kind of a pause from their buyers. They're seeing fatigue and frustration from buyers who are just saying, I'm taking a pause right now. This market's too crazy. And those buyers will probably come back to the market, but they're just taking a deep breath right now. Winnipeg saw a little under 1,500 homes sold in the month. That is down 29% from last year. There was just under 1,900 homes put up for sale, and that is down 19% from last year. 2,100 homes are currently for sale. That is down 19% from last year, and that means months of inventory is 1.4. The benchmark price in Winnipeg is $353,000, and that is up 13% from last year. Talking with local real estate agents in Winnipeg, they said that if you're looking to buy a house in a highly desirable neighborhood of Winnipeg, don't be just surprised to see a ton of offers and it sell for $100,000 over asking. That is no longer the exception to the rule. It's becoming the norm in those neighborhoods. Uh-oh, in Toronto, sales and prices are down. The world has to be ending. It's the end of the world as we know it. There was 8,000 homes sold in the month. That is down 11% from the five year average. Typically there's 9,000 homes sold in the month. There are about 18,500 homes put up for sale in the month in Toronto. And that is up 13% from the five year average. Normally about 16,000 homes are listed for sale. There are 13,000 homes currently for sale in Toronto. That is down 8% from the five year average. Normally about 14,300 homes are for sale. Months of inventory is at 1.6. This is the first time we've had more than a month's worth of inventory in Toronto since the fall of last year and the highest months of inventory since the middle of 2020. The composite benchmark price, so that's all property types combined together, this is very different than average price. And if you want me to do an explainer, explaining why average price is actually a really bad metric to use to gauge what's going on in the housing market, let me know in the comments below. But that composite benchmark price is up 32% from last year. It is down 
1.5% from last month. Right now, it's $1.354 million. Talking with agents in Toronto, there's two themes that I was hearing from them, and that is the move away from the suburbs back to the core of Toronto. And that of course means that we're seeing fewer single family homes selling and more condos and townhouses. That is where the hotspot of the Toronto market is right now. A little under 1,900 homes were sold last month in Ottawa. That's up 2% from the five year average of about 1,850. Months of inventory in Ottawa, finally, one month of inventory. This is the best it's been in a very long time in Ottawa. And the composite benchmark price is hovering around $770,000. That's up 13% from last year. Agents from Ottawa are telling me that we're seeing fewer multiple offer situations and houses that have offer nights receiving zero offers. Now, there's still a very strong seller's market in Ottawa, but it's not as crazy as it was before. These are all signs indicating that we are seeing a slowdown and a craziness that has been the Ottawa real estate market for the last couple of years. In Montreal, they had 5,100 homes sold in the month. That is up 6% from the five year average of about 4,800 sales in the month. 6,300 homes were put up for sale in the month and that is up about 12% from the five year average of about 5,600 homes. There are 10,500 homes currently for sale in Montreal. That is down 58% from the five year average. Normally there's about 20,000 homes for sale right now. And that means months of inventory is at two. It still means it's a strong seller's market in Montreal. Of course, if it's a seller's market, that means prices are gonna be increasing. The composite benchmark price in Montreal is about $575,000, up 16% from last year. Talking with agents in Montreal, they said that the suburbs are doing better than the island of Montreal and the core areas, which is kind of the reverse of what we're seeing in Toronto. And there is a rush and urgency from buyers right now that have rate holds to buy a property before those rate holds expire. In Halifax, they had 488 homes sold. That is down 44% from last year. The lack of inventory continues to hold back sales. 355 homes for sale right now in Halifax. That is down 3% from last year. Months of inventory is 0.7, so just a couple of weeks there. That of course means average price in Halifax continues to go up over $500,000 now. That is up 19% from last year. When I was talking with real estate agents from Halifax, they did mention that they are seeing a shift in the market. They've gone from the insane crazy 50, 60 offers on just about everything to still seeing lots of multiple offers, but not nearly as crazy as it was a couple of months ago. The other interesting little piece of information is that the Nova Scotia government had announced a kind of foreign buyer ban. That was anybody who was not a Nova Scotia resident was gonna have to pay an additional land transfer tax and yearly property tax. They've axed that second half, so there's no longer gonna be the additional yearly property tax, but there will still be the extra land transfer tax for anybody who is a non-Nova Scotia resident buying properties in Nova Scotia. So is the Canadian real estate market about to crash? Probably not, even though the headlines are gonna be telling you that, and not just this month, but probably for a number of months in a row here. What we're seeing is a market that is pausing to catch its breath. This happens all the time when interest rates increase, but we're also seeing a lot of buyer frustration, fatigue, and fear, and all of that is combining to slower sales numbers. Yes, there are markets that are seeing sales decline by 40 and 50%, but remember that is relative to last year, the craziest year on record by a mile. 2022 is still gonna likely end up being the second busiest year all time in Canadian history. So yes, sales are down, but it's still a very active and strong real estate market in Canada. But do you know what is going to crash? YouTube, if you don't check out this first time home buyers playlist or this video right here, which the YouTube algorithm has picked out just for you. They say that's the best video that you need to watch next year on Ball Prairie Real Estate. As always guys, thanks very much for watching.